Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Lee. You will not find any videos of myself during these lectures. Why? Because it is not about me. But the focus should be on the gospel. We hope that you had a good week, and I hope you are wearing your mask and social distancing during this crisis. Once again, we thank you for tuning in to the Pastor.Faith YouTube channel. We are bringing you messages using the manuscripts which were the original writings and interpretation into the King James Bible. This will give each and every one of us a clear view and understanding of the Bible which was created with the wisdom of God to teach with clarity and understanding, not to confuse. As we look at the book of James chapter 1 verse 5 through 6, it teaches us, if any lack wisdom, let him ask of the Lord who giveth to all men and women freely. So go with us now into another lecture where some are recorded live and some come directly from the desk of the pastor. Come follow us with your Bibles as we follow Christ. We are moving on today to Advent 5, and we've covered uh, Advent 1, 2, 3, 4, and these are the Advents leading up to uh, the, the birth of Jesus, and today we're going to do Advent 5, which is entitled, The Mission Begins, and now that he's born, there's a development process that has to happen. Because remember, Jesus is of God, from God, but he's living in a fleshly body, which he has a lot of things that have to be fulfilled according to Old Testament scriptures. Let's, let's look at the theme here. The theme is the journey includes many challenges. When we set goals to, to, to complete uh, specific task it does involve challenges and not everybody's up for the challenge you know people set goals and sometimes we see other people with goals set and they endure until the end and they are successful but many of us sometimes set goals that we're not able to perfect and we back off and lose out and turn and go the other way but Jesus was persistent to do the Father's will. Let's go quickly to Luke chapter 2, verse 22 through 35. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem. Gee, and this is Jesus. Now, when we're talking about the purification, Mary had delivered Jesus and she has a period of time that she has to go through according to the law of Moses to uh, be uh, perfected and complete and cleansed all right physically and they brought Jesus to present him to the Lord now as it is written in verse 23 in the law of the Lord every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord Verse 24, and to offer a sacrifice according that which is said in the law of the Lord. Remember, Jesus is the cornerstone and he's bringing the New Testament and the Old Testament together. So he still had to fulfill the Old Testament and complete it so that he could start the New Testament. A, he had to bring a pair, or they had to bring a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons to offer up a sacrifice as they presented Jesus to the Father. Verse 25, 
And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. So he was waiting for the peace, or we could say the peaceful one to come and, and give Israel direction. And the only difference is, is that most people thought it was going to be a physical direction, but this was a spiritual direction that Jesus was giving, that was coming, and that would direct the flesh, the body, to respond and do the will of the Father through Jesus Christ. Verse 26, And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now, isn't that something? Wonder what that would be like if you were spoken to by God saying that you would never see death until a certain event came to pass. How would we feel? How would we live our lives? That's a good question. Recklessly or still waiting and trusting upon the Lord? And we can see Simeon here, he waited patiently uh, for the Christ, the Deliverer, to come. So verse 27, And he came by the Spirit unto the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up, in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now, O thou thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. And Simeon saw the salvation that was coming forth, that had been prophesied, and now he can depart from this earth. Verse 31 which thou hast prepared before the face of the people, and the people can see it and witness to it. Verse 32, a light to the lighten the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel. So this salvation would, is sent down for all mankind, not certain races or cert, uh, a certain race but everyone is, be, is going to be able to be a partaker of this salvation that God has provided through Jesus Christ. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And this was by Simeon. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising against or again of many in Israel. And what he was saying here, the, the truth, the word that he brings, some will rise up and become better people and great people through it, and then there will be some that will fall because they refuse to obey his words and do the will of the Father through Jesus Christ. And for a sign which shall be spoken against. If you don't heed and do what Jesus preaches during his ministry, then it will be a sign against you. Verse 35, Yea, a word shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now again, here we have Simeon addressing Mary, the mother of Jesus. And the sword that he's speaking of is watching her son die on the cross of Calvary. And the, when they throw the sword through him, the sword will pierce her because he is of her. And that is her son and she will feel the repercussions of physically as well as spiritually. 
And this is done that, again, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed, may get an understanding, and that an understanding of why he's here and what needs to be done. Because there were many that, even after he died, rose, he resurrected, they still didn't even understand what was going on. But this is the thoughts of many hearts that it may be revealed to. Verse 21, And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So the main directive of him going to the temple was following the law about circumcision and everything was prepared for him that it may be done and it may come forth as the Father in heaven has dictated it to be. Luke 2, chapter 36 through 40. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanelul of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which is 64 years old which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. So she was another one that was waiting for the appearance of the Christ child. Let's look at verse 38. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned unto Galilee in their own city, Nazareth. So the ceremony was over. And the Bible says in verse 40, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. Now, this particular verse covers when Jesus was born up until 12 years old. And he received the will for the reasoning why he was here on this earth. He didn't fight it, but he received it. And here we have now Jesus at 12 years old. Jesus goes to the temple to speak to the elders and read the scroll. And it is recorded in Luke 4, 18 through 20. Listen, he stands up and just picture him. 12 years old, standing up before grown men anywhere from 40, 50, 60 years old. And he, and he begins to speak as he opens the scroll. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he was reading from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 through 3. Remember, the New Testament had not been written yet. So, he showed his signs of being of the Father, from the Father, and doing the will of the Father, because those scriptures had to be in him to be able to recite them at any specific time that it was needed. And again, he stands before the altars and this is what he says I'm going to repeat verse 18 the spirit of the Lord is upon me he knows it he doesn't have to think about it he doesn't have to procrastinate he knows the spirit of the Lord is upon him 
because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Verse 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. Why were they fastened on him? They have never, ever ran across a 12-year-old that had so much wisdom and so much knowledge and could read the scriptures, read the scroll, and know what it meant. And as he read it, they felt it. And they did not know what was about to come to pass. And I know that that was a conversational piece for all of them when they went home and, and talked amongst their families and possibly had a meeting right after uh, and, and talked amongst themselves. And in one scripture it does say, who is this? Isn't he uh, Joseph the carpenter's son? And so, I ask you the question today. What were you doing 12 when you were 12 years old? Can you remember? Some didn't even have a thought about Christ or about serving the Lord. But let's talk about those that were in the church. Those that have received Christ as Lord and Savior. Those that went as far as being baptized. What was going through your heart or through your mind at that time? Was there sincerity? Did you know that you were anointed to go this direction? Or were you still struggling? What are you doing after you have received Christ as Lord and Savior today? Are you making headway? Are you still growing in grace? Are you still growing in wisdom and grace? Is your spirit still waxing strong? This is what it takes for us to pursue the mission that God has given us. And I will say to you today, not every road that we travel is a road of glory. We're going to have trials and tests and challenges. But I ask the question to you, is your eyes on Christ through the Word? Because if it is, you'll make it. Because you're not leaning toward anything negative or anything persuasive but you're leaning on the word of God and you're listening for the Holy Spirit to speak through you to you that you may finish the course. Amen. Thank you for joining us on the Pastor.Faith YouTube channel. We encourage you to have a conversation with God on a daily basis. Not many people take the time out of their schedule to do so. This ministry encourages everyone to receive Jesus Christ into their life as Lord and Savior. You may ask, how do I receive him? Just talk to him, confessing to him as being a sinner and how much you need him. Asking Jesus into your heart, which is your mind, and in doing so, we then have a covenant with God that when we repent and ask forgiveness for any of our sins that we all commit regularly, God is justified to forgive us of our sins. Let me say that the most challenging moment 
we will face in our life is receiving that forgiveness that God provides. You may not feel comfortable the first time around, but practice makes perfect. Knowing that someone loves you deeply as God Almighty, he himself has proven by bringing his only begotten son to take on our sins as the last sacrifice for mankind to absorb all of the sins of mankind that we all commit and still having the power to forgive us. We love you and look forward to meeting with you and sharing the next message. Soon as I stopped worrying Worrying how the story ends When I let go and I let God I let God have his way That's when things start happening When I stop looking at back then when I let go and I let God, I let God have His way. Mm -hmm. I couldn't seem to fall asleep. There was so much on my mind, searching for that peace, but the peace I could not find. Oh, but then I, I kneel down to pray. I was praying, help me please. Then he said, you don't have to cry. Because I'll supply all your needs. Let go. Oh, 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 let